Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to the Community Expansion for TNO. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, but we're back in the past now. 1965, in which we need to see what is up with the Usuyan side of the, the Yugra tree, or focus tree, really. So, we're going to go with Usuyan this time, because last time with Jabba Izuliani. Totally cool, but now we've got to do a lot of stuff here. Arrange an accident. Oh. Well, doesn't look like that did very much for us, but that's okay. So, with a lot of the books that I've already read before, I'm going to go ahead and just not read them. So, if, I'd if you want to read it, please go ahead. So, you so, he'll continue giving chase. Cool. So, yeah, 60%, 40%, not good. But, at the same time, if you want to read about Arduino Thieves, please go ahead. As we'll kind of speed through stuff. Um, if you want to read about Arduino to Russia, please go ahead as well. As well as Arduino to the people, once again, just because we're going to see... How much content there is for us, but arranging an accident sounds like fun. Uh, do we get anything there? No, maybe. No, that sucks. Make promises to bandits. Okay, we get a little, slightly more stability. That's not bad. We'll try it. Why not? Of course, we can reunify Russia. That's gonna happen a little bit later. We're going to fight probably Samara here. We'll see. Ooh, search for and help. All right, the Far East Medal. That's all they want. Uso Yan hummed a little. The Japanese are certainly cheap. Ilo stood near his commander, side on the contracts. They had received in huge bundles. The Kurdish spider no having sat for several hours, staring at the demands that came with the aid. Well, Uso Yan stabbed the document. One of the many dozen he had already gone through. Their equipment will carry us if ours won't. Ilo cleared his throat. Maybe take a look at the American letters? I think there were quite a few simple ones. Certainly, certainly. Uso Yan pulled, out, pulled one of the sheets before snoring and taking out a blank piece of paper and writing something on it. Sir? Uso Yan handed the two sheets back to Ilo, chuckling. There, send them this. It should work. If it isn't too much, what exactly? Oh, nothing actually impactful. Some promises to reform, nothing actually. Nothing really important. And then our duty to Russia, of course, because we want to reduce that strain on our uh, this country in, in general. Hopefully we can get a little bit more influence than Izuliani, but we're doing relatively okay for now. Oh, we have an overextended administration, which sucks so much. And we're back at 50, of course. And we can't do anything here yet. Oh, that sucks. But we're still trying to build more civvies, of course, like normal. Pretty normal stuff here. And then our duty to Russia. And our duty to the people, or... Yeah, let's do our duty to the people, and then I'll read the next uh, little event thing for us. There you go, nice. Go do that. One, two. Make promises to the bandits. Nice, 60 is pretty good. Alright, duty to the people. Follow it up with... Uh, we did the, the left side last time. But now we're going to the right side. Calls for a thieves dictatorship. The current establishment is not a conductive one to a functioning state. In this time of chaos, the only thing that I will say of Russia is a strong one under the rule of a powerful leader. The Vori v. Zakon must mobilize into a force of authority, ensuring the security of the prosperity of all of Russia's peoples. Nice. And keep spending for now. It's totally fine. Totally cool to spend, spend, spend until you're completely out of money, and then you spend some more until you're completely bankrupt. It's totally okay. That's what I learned the government. Hmm. Or at least from other people I lived with. Or no. Yeah, no, don't take out $100,000 worth of student loans, everybody. Anyways. Oh, looks like we gotta fight tomorrow, which kinda sucks, but whatever. Yeah, that'd be good. Five days left, which means we can probably get one more here, maybe? 65 is pretty nice, though. Come on, get one more. One more. We can get one more, right? Yeah, maybe we'll see. Subverting so our actions. Oh, no! And then, time for change. Squeeze and dry. Ooh, on the clock. Oh, see you on stare at the clock, absolutely. Oh, if you also want to read about better agricultural methods, please go right ahead. Nice. Uh, we're, we're counting the ports he was already given on Arseny. The little dude had pocketed some profit. Fifteen minutes to ten, the small-time Pakan Arseny Voronov entered the bar at exactly this time as per schedule. Usuyan blinked as a minute clock moved one unit forward. Four minutes to ten, he ordered a plate of soup, any and then some crappy beer, and another unit. Tick, 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 tock. The cur rubbed his eyes, looking up at the clock expectantly. The cook, a lovely woman behind the counter, goes to fetch the two. The arthritis does slow her down a bit, but he accounted for it. Three minutes, thirty-three minutes. A bowl of lukewarm soup and some beer. The small timer takes a usual waft of it, like it usually does habitually. Then takes a spoon and begins eating. The delivery guy rides through the back door with a box of beetroot. One of them looks a little damaged, but nothing suspicious. Two minutes. Ozeon felt a little giddy, his eyes not moving off the clock's face. The driver places the boxes behind the counter and then offers a woman a couple of cigarettes. The two walk out to smoke and reminisce. Tick tock. Come on, Ozeon mouth. One minute. The small timer uh, continues eating his crappy soup, not hearing the ticking coming from one of the boxes under the counter. Ten o'clock. Lucian blinked and rubbed his eyes with his hands. It takes about a minute to get to the nearest phone booth. Ring! Lucian picked up the phone. Yes? The RCD problem is taken care of. Perfect! Lucian placed the phone down and looked at the clock, grimacing slightly. 
Time for change. Ooh, we get more political power here. Ooh, one start party state. Uh, squeeze them dry. Not bad. We get high taxes, which hurts our political power by a very a huge amount. We get more money, though. Um, we might also go with time for change first. For the sake of our government, <clears throat> we must center our focus on enforcing our power and building our people into a source of power, resources, and the protection of our statuses as Vodi v. Sakon. And here the path will surely spell death for our new nation. <clears throat> ah, the Vipuri Conference. Very nice. Good Friday Conference. Oh, but, okay, so it's just a demilitarized zone. Okay, well. Uh, favor the clique. Uh, well, which one do I do? Yeah. Right, do that one. Cool. Hey, wow, we're already 90. That's. Wow, okay. Favor Usuyan's clique. Cliche? Probably clique. Aslan Usuyan is a man we need to save our new nation. He already effectively controls the nation. The useless, lethargic Jabba Isuliani is the only thing standing between him and the forging of a new thief dictatorship. We must work to remove the unworthy leader and establish our Usuyan as gr the great Pakhan. As we do have a cup of coffee, you'd keep it. Us nice and warm and ready for war in the future, of course. Ah, tasty, tasty, tasty. What are we missing here? We're anti tank, artillery, and guns. Pretty darn normal. Yeah, you go to five, you go to five there, too. Nice. And then what does this one do? Ooh, stability, yes please. A nation of our own. Regardless of how we end up running the place, we must assure that people like us have a place at all. Whether by old ways or new, Russia will truly be a nation for us. Whether the madmen, strongmen, pansies, and jackboot lickers of the world like it or not. Stability is super, super good to get. Because it gives more political power, more output, less consumer goods, uh, less resistance, even though we don't really have resistance right now. And yeah, overall, oh, oh more division organization, recovery rate, construction speed. Oh, that's, oh wait, oh, we're at 100% already. There's no point in doing that. Nice. Very awesome. Dreams of centralization. The potential to become a proper nation of thieves is there, right in front of us. All we have to do is set up our nation in a way that enforces the hierarchy we need to survive. A good way to start is to move towards government centralization. Reduce local governance, restructure some bureaucracy, and most importantly, get rid of the opposition. Always a good thing to do. Always good to get rid of the opposition. Keep building, 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 though. We're only at four billion. That's why we keep boosting up military spending so we can get some more infantry equipment and stuff. Uh, since we're here, you know what? Oh, we don't have enough arm XP. God dang it. Sucks. Close that out. Do this. Dream of central immunization. And just keep building for now. Opposites do not attract. Uh, I think I read this one before. Uh, if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. Yeah, nothing unexpected. Yeah. Uh, a, a home for the thief. Our territory is meant for us. The thieves, the people, the Russians, the Eurasians. All of us make our home here, and it belongs to no one other than us. The thief territory can be, will be, must be the home of the thief in law. Nice. There you go. <coughs> Excuse him, wow. Unification of Russia. Horizontal Dreams Designs. Let's do that. Oh, yes, please. Boost, boost. Thank you. Squeeze him dry is next. 5.7 is not bad. Could be a lot better, though. Oh, quite a bit of lag. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. There you go. Have fun with that. Squeeze him dry. Who do, who do we rule? Dudes. That's who. <clears throat> now, even a year ago, all these people wanted to kill us, and now they want us to give us to give them things willy-nilly? What nonsense. Take their money and put it in our coffers. We'll see how much they want to complain after that. That's really bad for us. High taxes. Let's search our output. Get a lot more money. Hurts our construction speed. Hurts our stability. Hurts so much political power gain. Ah, uh, why? As much as... Don't get me wrong. I love getting a lot more money. I love getting a lot more money. But... Uh, it's not really balanced. Or at least, you know, the way I would want it, so... But we're gonna squeeze them. Because, you know what? I like... Uh, we like getting squeezed here. Uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Your loyalty for survival. The rats we rule over are just like that. Rats! They're just as quick to praise you as they are to stab you in the back. If we want to rule these lands, we cannot show them silly things like mercy, human rights, or similar nonsense. If they want to live in West Siberia, in our land, they'll have to listen to us and only us. The only thing they deserve is to live in exchange for the servitude. Nice. This is the land stable as the government. This more than Jabba is the Liani government. I held several meetings where the Pakans are not aligned with us were shown the stability of the government and how is the Liani. 
uh, was a good leader and whatnot. The meeting also either dissuaded or dissuaded them from working with us due to the apparent success of these meetings. Several pecans and officials have left our circles to cut off recruitment contact opinion. It appears that Izuyani figured out how to stabilize the government, or at least convince people the government is stable. This tactic has already lost some good men. We need to step up our efforts if we want any hope of victory. We are also Katerian countryman Leonid Rojov. Rojov. Prepare as many propaganda posters as possible. We need to recover our lost base. There you go. Squeeze them dry, because, you know, we all squeezing them. Uh, establish our legitimacy. More than by fear of charity. We must establish ourselves as the rightful rulers of Russia. Now that there are people who rule to rule other than ourselves. Now with people with that the people on our side, we might actually be able to achieve great things. The formation of a people focused Russia, a lasting global impression, and greatest of all, a unified Russia. So without extra money, that barely did anything. Yeah, that was not worth it. That was absolutely not worth it. <sighs> that sucks. That really sucks. Uh, build it up. We'll build up stuff as time goes on, too, so. Um, do that, too. Thank you. And go ahead and do that one, too. And I will read probably Prisoners No More. With so much done so quickly, we must look back and remember how we got here. It was only through the ingenuity, bravery, and sacrifice of a few noble scoundrels that were, we were even able to free, or be free, much less leaders of a nation. Because of them, the people of Russia will no longer be forced to wallow in poverty, be crushed under the jackboot, or starved under the hammer and sickle. No more will we be prisoners, and forevermore we shall be free. <clears throat> Yes, please. Here, finish that one first. That'll be good. Of course, it's only August 1966, but that's okay. Nice. There you go. Ooh, actually, not bad. 1.66. 1.6, I should say. Yeah, the high taxes really hurt. It's, it's just not worth doing with it. St hit to stability, hit to construction speed. Yeah, I really wouldn't recommend that one, but that's okay. So if you want to about the economic issue... <clears throat> Once more, please go right ahead. Uh, I've already read through most of these. I'm going to try to do the ones I didn't do earlier. I don't think I'll do Found Criminal Corporations, which sounds like fun. I'll probably do the All Russian Oil Consortium, which sounds like fun. I think I'll probably add an education for crime. Oh, research facilities still improved too, huh? Nice. And I also want to make sure we keep improving society here too. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, extra influence on Southern Urals, yes. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Ooh. I know these guys have to deal with this stuff for a while. We just want max investment, which is it doesn't seem like any be any penalty to do it like this, but still. We'll see. And there we go. Cool. Economic issues. So we'll probably start with Talking about our budget here. Boom, boom. It's fine for now. Uh, GP or assume mouse moves. We're going to do mafia run businesses. If you want to read about that one, please go ahead. Nice. Okay, so they're neutral now. That sucks. Yeah, I don't know if we'll actually be able to get to them. Yeah, why do we. Point. They just go up by one a day. That's ridiculous. Yeah, just. Mm. We could try. Let's save here just in case. Just because the AI cheats <clears throat> to get more influence than us, which really sucks. So, we can close out of that one. Close that one. Just go and go to war. I hate that so much, man. Why, why, why? And hopefully we get some more equipment. Oh, we're good on tanks, though, at least. Yeah, just, you might as well just go in. If we can get at least the Euro League, that'll be good. So, after this one, as much as I want to do this one, because stability war sports pretty nice to get, which we could use immediately. We'll go with Fallon Criminal Corporations. So we get more construction speed, which does help us out since we did go with high taxes, but that's okay. <clears throat> if you want to read about this, please go ahead. Nice. Oh, and what do we have here? Hey, region development. Just do it all. I don't care. Oh, yes. And if you want to read about the vestiges and the vestiges of Bolshevism, please go ahead. You get more stability, which is very, very good. Yes, just get them all. I don't care. We were men made to spend PP. The only problem with this is that Samara might go to war with us. Last time we did this, Samara was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, look at that. They have a higher influence than us right now. That's so stupid. So stupid. Stability is super, super important in TNO. There you go. Oh, 16 divisions. Not bad, not bad. I do want to throw some Armored Recon on here, though. I love Armored Recon so much. 
Mm, political thought, and eh, whatever. 1.79 is not bad every day. All right, after this one, uh, we're going to do ranking in the riches. So if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Uh, let's keep keep working on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh my goodness, let me get some water here. <clears throat> all right. The all Russian oil consortium, perhaps the most viable resource available to us to exploit in our current situation, as none other than oil, or some would call it black gold. We have received many reports from our best scientific minds that we may have only scratched the surface of the rich oil reserves in Siberia. With the proper funding, and most importantly, the proper management, we can pull our know how and capital together and create a massive oil company that will pump out profit like a great big river of money. Nice. Very nice. Robots, yes, please. Uh, just we're here. How's the land auction going? We're gonna wait for bonuses to land auction. You need some more artillery. Yes. Breaking in them riches. Oh, and there we go. Hopefully we can do well here. <coughs> uh oh, they go to war as well. Which is you know, as long as we can win one of these, that's what I really care about. So that's the most important thing to me. And then if you want to about steal every resource, please go right ahead. Nice. And getting going to war actually does give us a lot more army XP, which is super, super helpful. Belorotsk, please and thank you. Denounce his actions. We can do that one. Oh, we'll run some divisions. Nice. Actually, before we keep going, do we have any plans on these guys? Yes, we do. There we go. That's a little better. Go in, go in. Come on. If we take that tile... Then we win the war against them there. There we go. I think so. I could be wrong, though. There we go. See? Not bad. If we can move fast enough, we might actually be able to capture the Orenberg for us as well. But since we're here, go do that, too. Promises to bandits. Anything down here? A bitter disappointment. Rob took a step back as several of the crowd tried to approach the podium, screaming angrily. Whatever Isliani had just mentioned in his speech did not seem to calm the crowd and said it only got worse. S Sir, I think it's better. Roth leaned out of the way of the flying rock. Sir, let's go. Maybe the speeches were all the same, but this one didn't. This this time it didn't seem to work. Maybe next time. Okay, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, totally. Oh, hello. Nice. Go straight for Orenburg, guys. Go, 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 go. And actually, just double check. Civilian oversight. Nice. That's good stuff. Good stuff. Come on, take it. Oh, we got it. Nice. Do we get him? Oh, we got him this time. Awesome. Put you guys in half. There we go. Check us off. Very nice. Very, very nice. Now we're setting ourselves up for success. Metric construction. It is 67. Happy 67, everybody. Uh, anything else here? Let time go on. Land auction. Armor. Yeah, let's do that too. Steal every last stupid resource that they have. Oh, you guys are 29. Oh, no wonder you won. You're 29 combat width. It's all right. Mm, there you go. A little bigger. A little thicker. A little stronger. If you want to about the next step, please go right ahead. There you go. The thief's rolled. It's a 95 old way to do the make promises with the bandits, maybe. It's fine with me. And then getting our hands in the dirt. <laughs> Keeping our minds bright. Let's do... Yeah, I'll do this one. Getting our hands in the dirt first. Go get more stability. I like stability. Stability is super, super important, like I said earlier. Slurp, slurp. And 95. Can I, oh, there you go. Now go. Yay. The thief's rolled. If you want to look at this or read this one, please go ahead. It worked for the Americans. So then now I'm going to read Price Controls. Life in Russia is hard for almost everyone. Peasants, workers, merchants, you name it. They're probably broke and hungry, but why should we go out of our way to be their charity? We're thieves, darn it. It's in the name. If we want to keep the people from all starving to death, perhaps we should make food more available or affordable so that they have more money to give to us in taxes. Whistle Yan has proposed an institute, a program of price controls and rationing to ensure everyone has their film can work hard for a new capitalistic class. All it takes is a single stroke of a pen and we can make starvation just a fading memory for those that accept our wise, wise policies.
consolidate smaller farms. Collectivization was a horrific crime that saw family farms combined by the state. Successful peasants carted off to the camps, and the rest forced to be nothing more than farmhands on their own land. However, collectivization came with one advantage, and that was the smallest farmers that were smallest farms that were inefficient subsistence plots became part of a larger, more powerful whole, with Bolshevik incompetence of a thing of the past. The guidance of the thieves will see smaller farms absorbed in a larger estate, under the control of those who are most, of course, loyal to us. Resources, you might as well try that a little bit. Not really need that too much. Keep working on gun stuff for now, too. Anything there? 4.45 billion. Still not bad. Not that bad. Turn out some actions. Pretty normal stuff. Reunification of Russia. Regional integration. Pretty normal. One, one a day. Oh, that sucks, because we were losing 0.6 to coring stuff, but it's alright. We kind of have to do that. But if you'd like to reread re read again about your taxes for development, please go right ahead. I'm going to go ahead and read about an education for crime, though. Education is good and all, but st street smarts are a lot more important than book smarts. What use is a bright mind if you have no clue how to fight and struggle and make yourself known? The thieves rely on bright young criminals that are ready to beat up and kill at a moment's notice, and run into business the next. Kids ought to be taught on how to survive in the real world and instill a proper enterprising spirit in the young minds, rather than whatever Bolshevik BS. They are getting stuffed in the brains before. Nice. We do have 20 divisions here. My goodness, we're going to need a lot of manpower. What's in a name? Pietro scratched his beard with a dirt-covered rubber gloves that's always disappearing into his own thoughts as he tended to his field. Why, why the name the thieves? He could not really put a finger on it. Sure, the language was generally dirty. Their attire was terrible and they carried guns wherever they went and used them with little to no control, but who didn't? Peter, in fact, saw less theft, not more than when Kaganovich was still the man with the crown and working wasn't as unpleasant after all. Your own fuel feels much better than a community one, and who was he to start lying to himself? Yeah, they collected taxes, but at least they had the cons conscience to send some foul-mouthed gang pop to explain it first, rather than barging in and taking whatever they wanted. And the weekends, Pietro had not had a weekend since, well, he couldn't even remember one. Sure, he got longer breaks on Sundays, but otherwise it was a labor for the people and the party day in, day out. And they had sales. He never even bought or sold anything before, sure. He bartered, but knew that you could trade for a day's food and some new book with the paper stacks you got from a ton of potatoes somehow felt more reassuring than hoping that the Narcom was in good spirits one day or another. Why, the fact that he even thought about books was surprising. A couple of years back and he would just stare at those hieroglyphics or hieroglyphs slipped without a thought in the world. No, maybe they call themselves thieves, Peter considered. But he sure didn't see it. Which means they're being successful. But yeah, we'll do education for crime, of course, eventually. And I'll probably do a lot of this off screen as well just because we can, maybe. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see what happens. You never know until we actually do it. But we do need some bright minds here. Some very bright minds. And we're going to do that one. And that'll do you need knowledge isn't free. As it turns out, running a state-of-the-art uh, education system ain't going to be cheap. Uh, <clears throat> we're not doing this some out, of, some out of some benevolence for the masses. We're doing it because it's necessary for a functioning state to have proper education. Fortunately, it's also putting us in the rub. Many nations charge money, quite a few large amounts of money, for students to attend privately run universities. Especially when such universities are among the elite schools within their systems. If some rich parents want to bribe their kids in a university, who are we to say no? We'll just ramp up those totally necessarily exorbitant admissions prices and keep the bribes coming. As for those who can't afford it, too bad. Maybe they can become criminals instead and leave those rich nerds to their own machinations. I think I read this one before here as well. Um, if you want to be up this, please go right ahead. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I read this one before. Yeah. Don't disappoint me, Roth. I, I might be wrong about that, but I think I read that one before, so. Cool. As much as I love infrastructure, keep building for now. There you go. We have... Oh, we're demobilizing. We're at one-year draft, huh? That sucks. We really shouldn't be demobilizing, but okay. Huh. Okay, then. Okay. Where are we at? Through? Oh. Oh, okay. That makes more sense, then. Yeah. Keep your minds bright, guys. Education for crime? Yes, please. Of course, we'll uh, urbanize our holdings. If you want to do that one again, please go ahead as well. So 67, not bad. We have 20 divisions with recon. Well, 20, 40 combo with divisions with recon on them. Armored recon. How many tanks are we out currently? 33, that's not bad, actually. I don't want to see this one, though. 33 is not too bad. A cast. Ooh, infantry equipment is nice. Good. Get some more of that stuff. We'll keep one on infantry equipment for from here on out. We'll do the land auction a little bit later. We should be fine as well. We have almost 20 army XP, which is not bad either. It's not bad. Education for crime. Very good, very good, very good. Knowledge isn't free. Thank you. There you go. Keep making more pee pee. Say it again, state. Uh, I think I read this one before. Yeah. Oh, maybe, maybe not. 
Um, well, maybe I'll read this one. Murray looked at her son and <clears throat> entered the apartment, instantly noticing the scuffed uniform. Bunchenko, what happened, hmm? The young boy looked down at his shoes before muttering a fight. Maria shook her head and sighed. Come sit down. The boy would drop a school bag and sit down at the dinner table, not looking up from his knees. The young woman would sit across from him. You know you can't keep going on like this, right, Van Jacob? The boy would not respond. Hey, Rick, you come back like this, all dirty and beaten. You have to start growing up, son. You cannot solve your problems with your fists. It's all Zenka's fault. The boy was shot, raising his eyes, clearly about to burst into angry tears. We promised that we wouldn't give each other out. Uh, just because I stole some chalk, he gave me out like a dirty rat. Maria sighed, keeping her voice as even as possible. But I'm yet, that is still not... That's why dad... Then why is dad allowed to? And I'm not. I heard vores are supposed to look out for each other. The young woman barely contained the surprise. Well, that boy would run and sob out of the room, knocking over the chair, slamming the door behind him. Vanya Maria would try to follow, but then sat back down, sighing again and rubbing her forehead. She did not know why her husband, I suppose Vorvi Zakon, one of the who was never supposed to work with the government, suddenly became the chief of local police, or how he permitted himself to marry even though Vors were supposed to be never married. She could not wrap her head around it either, just as her son. Vors promises honor God they're only they're no more mature than Vanya. No marks again. Oh, if you're wondering about this one, this was the one I was thinking about. Please go right ahead. Sorry, Ma, yeah. This is one I remember that up uh, with the kid that was, yeah, kind of disappointed his mom all the time. Just like us. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, really good on guns, though. Artillery's really bad. Everything else is, hmm. There you go. Eh, let me do a 15. Go, I'm not going to lower that one. I'm going to lower this one by one. Uh, I'm going to lower this by one for now as well, because we're going to really need it later. Get a lot more of this, get a lot more of this as well. Knowledge ain't free. Pretty much. Urbanizer Holdings. And then... If we wonder about this one, let the money flow, please go right ahead. And there you go. Nice. How are you guys looking? Pretty good. Uh, Nikolai, do you have anything for us? Scavenger, not bad. Anatoly, Chekhov, nothing there. Jabba. Honestly, we should probably be using this guy, but, you know, it's fine for whatever. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's switch him around. Clearing the ranks. Extract from Armed Forces Chatter. Uh, data redacted. Omega 5, base the targets on the move. I think you caught on. We're coming. Base, you're free to engage him ASAP. Omega. And there are cities around. You're free to engage. Capture the internal threat is more important. Understood. Engaging the target. Another one bites the dust. There you go. Level 4 attack is better than, well, 3, but still. Let the money flow, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. After that, and then we'll do the Army of the Thieves because we can get some more Army Professionalism. If you want to about this one, please go right ahead. <clears throat> And we'll do the left side, neutral as a Swiss, when we get to entering the global theater. Or the stage. Whatever we want to call it, really. But unfortunately, we're all out of coffee now. Sucks. Oh, 22 divisions. Nice. Would you look at that? Our GDP growth is very close. Very, very close to being our annual debt interest. That's nice. That's actually very nice. One, two, three. Almost four. Not bad. Not bad either. I'm just waiting for the next Sosal development to really kick in. Ooh, let's come back over here and do that one. Thank you. Let's see. Where are we at for Sosal development? So, four is not great. Five is a little better. Barely. Agriculture. We'll get up to probably max out agriculture eventually. Poverty should be improving very soon. Oh, I guess not. Okay, then. Huh. Industrial equipment is pretty good, too. Uh, industrial expertise will, will definitely go up. Army professionalism could be improved a little bit more as well. So if you want to read about assessing potential, please go ahead. We're all like everyone else. Better APCs. We don't want to produce garbage tanks. Basics, no, we want improved. And then, oh, the paths that grow thorns. Um, I think I read, maybe we read this one before, but Usa Yan pastes his office's ELO right off the list. Two food trucks, several tons of small arms ammo, a seized ammo depot. Enough! The Kurt stopped in his tracks, turning on his heel, staring down his right-hand man. Well? He looked corrected his sign nervously, blinking a couple times. Well, what, sir? What did that offer respond to our demands? Uso Yan rounded his desk, sitting down and interlocking his fingers. When will this stop? Well, uh, Ela opened the crumpled note, clipped the notebook, clearing his throat. I quote, let the boys have some fun, a new few missing bullets is no harm done. Madness, utter madness, the Kurt interrupted his assistant, standing again, measuring the room with his steps. That is, that is not a lack of discipline. Who does that brute take me for? Elo waited for a pause in the tirade. You are certainly correct. The destruction of assets in such a massive wave is likely is unlikely to be. I know, Elo, I know. No need to repeat my thoughts, Usuyan rubbed his temples. This must end. Put all drivers on the smuggling routes. Off the main roads. No more emergency aid. I want you to crush his suck-up skulls. Starve them of everything. The expert will make up for it. The animal will be paying his debts threefold. Cool. Because I want to get over to... That's 100,000 map, is pretty nice. I'm cutting you off. If you want to read this one, please go ahead. Yeah, I remember this one, yeah. Uh, the National Conscription Reform. Oh, wait. When you're draft with... Oh, that's not good. That's very much not good. 
Uh, modernize the forces. I want the army professionals some. Advanced training methods. Oh, there it is. There's that one. Speed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to get less attack, huh? So, if you want to buy this one, please go ahead. Oh, uh, that's going to suck. And we already have no manpower, so. We do have 24 divisions, which is pretty nice, but. Defending all of the, these divisions will be kind of difficult, man. Disband, disband, disband them. Where are we at? One, two, three, four. Oh, oh, we're sort of on the fifth line. Nice. Very nice. Nice. Yeah, we just come up. One more society development. Even though we don't, we don't have the political power for it, but whatever. whatever. There we go. Cool. More army speed is always nice, though. So. Pretty good. Even though we would like some tanks eventually. Good make a 40 combo with. We'll probably need some logistic companies as well. Expand the militias is good. Um, the national conscription reform. Let's go and do this one first. Because it also improves uh, army professionalism, which is important. The National Conscription Reform, the Thief Territory is a large anarchic place. The law of the thieves gives local pecans virtually absolute power over their holdings. All we ask in return is loyalty and a lot of money, unfortunately. Some pecans are giving us neither. At least this loyal foods are not only seriously threatening our financial military situation, but as gangsters they tend to get into very bloody turf wars with the forces of other pecans, causing divisions within our ranks and terrorizing the local civilians we put in our protection. We will tolerate this no further. All military recruitment will be done at a national level, every, with every oblast required to give a certain number of conscripts monthly. Any pecans that do not comply will be punished severely. And then if you wonder about advanced training methods, please go right ahead. <clears throat> and then we'll go to the both right side. So we do master. Um, if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. I remember this one, so. Some things can't be bought, no matter the price. Uh-oh. Now we can do it, which is, hmm. Vision development. Now we've got to be selective here. Uh, industry would be always good. It's always good to do. I want to wait for poverty stuff. I want to wait for army professionalism. That type of stuff is really, 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 really good to get. Just gotta wait a little bit for the next ones to spawn up. Spawn, 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 spawn. There we go. Some more spawn. Let's see. Hmm. Not yet. Well, teach them shrewdness. What use is it to have the strength of a bear if you have the brain of a donkey? We don't need an army of a litter untrained rabble. We expect to have any stake in claiming all of Russia, thankfully. Not all hope is lost. The thieves have plenty of experience in unconventional forms of warfare. All soldiers, NCOs, and line officers will receive appropriate training in guerrilla warfare, ambushes, night attacks, and reconnaissance. Creative solutions and initiative will be encouraged as opposed to the strictly hierarchical command structures of the old union that crumpled or crumbled against the Nazi advance. Our enemies will never know what hit them. Poverty relief. For instructors. State welfare. Those are the ones that I always like to hit really hard. Um, construction speed would be really nice. Industry is super important as well. Anything else here that we really care about? What manpower would be nice. Um, infrastructure would be good as well, but it doesn't really matter too much for some of these. Uh, go with. Might as well go with that one. This one. There you go. Propaganda. And eh, we don't need that one yet. We can do some other ones. Investing construction. Eh, we're kind of okay, ish. So we'll get all that other stuff soon enough, anyways. And then form the Spetsnaz. That'll be good to do. Oh, nice. Good, 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 good. Land auction, not yet. Keep working on them tanks for now, because that'll help us out, hopefully. Uh, yeah. Form the Spetsnaz. In war, some missions are just too dangerous for the average soldier to handle, no matter how well trained or experienced he is in battle. For tasks like espionage, sabotage, and raids behind enemy lines, our army will need a new class of warrior. Recruited from among the best soldiers we have in our ranks and our best mercenaries money can buy. These elite soldiers will be formed into a new unit. The Spetsnazovsky, uh, Spetsnazovsky, uh, Spetsnazovsky, or Spetsnaz for short. Trained to fight anywhere, anytime, any, in any way, the Spetsnaz will pave our path of victory in the blood of our enemies. Nice. Uh, let's go with the, that one. Uh, let's go with this one. Yes, you can. Talk a scene. Cool. Teach some shrewdness. Cool. And ready for war would be nice to do. If you want to about that one, please go ahead. We'll do, probably do that one off screen anyways. Uh, and in the global theater. If you want to about this one, please go ahead. We could really use that extra political power right now, though. Oh, boy. Oceans fine for now. Boosted one bunch of boosted. I keep losing it for now. 4.6. Come on. Just a little bit more annual gr growth, please. Please, please. Because that was by Jean, huh? Also, I, for this part of the campaign with Uso Yan, we won't be doing the second West Russian War mod just because um, I don't have it installed. And it won't work, anyways, I think so. It is what it is. Cool. Mm. 
uh, quite a 50-50 idea. So, neutral is the Swiss. The Russian bear has always been the subject of international intrigue. Uh, some love us, some fear us, and many have tried to conquer us, some successfully. Now the Russia has awoken from her sleep. The Americans and Japanese alike will try to woo us with promises of freedom and profits. And the Germans denounce us as Slavic dogs who will soon be conquered in totality once and for all. They will all be disappointed if their aim is to make us their puppet. If, on the other hand, they wish to approach us with honest intentions of trade and business, who are we to reject them? Increases in funding. Snippet of exchange of officer redacted from redacted. Spectre, ghostly, Omega, congratulations, gentlemen. It seems that our higher-ups have either recognized uh, our achievements or have signed the wrong check because more equipment is coming your way. I believe that the assessment of our targets will be going more smoothly from now on. Cash me, you're out. Eyes in every corner, ear in every wall. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Education funding, yeah, I'll do that one as well next. Because all these other ones do not help us get more society development, right? Yeah, these ones do not. But now, hey, now we have more GDP growth rate than the actual debt, so we should be okay-ish. A meeting in Madrid? Why not? The Iberian Union is a chimera born from the chaos of the Second World War. Mostly aligned with the victorious Italy before the war, the twin Caldullos suffered greatly from the Atlantic Atlantropa disaster. Though both our nations may suffer from poverty and instability, we have also much to gain from mutual cooperation. A mutual hatred of the Germans, a mutual love of capitalism, and most importantly, a mutual respect for strong leadership. General Franco seemed quite approachable to offers from the Great Pakan. Perhaps a meeting with the Caldullo himself in Madrid might prove a fruitful adventure. Maybe, just maybe. Keep building, building, building. Air bases are nice. The neutral option. This will unfurl the map of Europe onto his desk. Good maps. were hard to find these days. This one was the only one of the few he could get that wasn't 30 years out of date. And a rather unfortunate state of much of it was lying under the Nazi jackboot made things pretty hard for Java. The thieves demanded money and power for his loyalty, but with a swastika flying from Amsterdam to Moscow, there weren't exactly a lot of options he had left. Earlier, he had considered opening relations with the U.S. C CIA agents had already involved themselves in training his troops, no doubt, in exchange for hefty amounts of money and other legal, less legal things that only the thieves in law could provide, one problem. The Americans were an ocean away in the other than the frozen Kara and Lapthev seas, the thief territory was landlocked. That left him with one option, the neutral nations of Europe. The German sphere might have been out of his hands, but there was still money to be found on the continent. Britain we, was a state not unlike his own, and for the right price, he'll trade with anyone. Pulling out a market, he circled the country before moving south. Switzerland was another good option, neutral and rich. Iberian uh, Italy were perhaps even more lucrative. With empires of their own and mutual hate for the Germans, a lucrative relationship could be made, both with the governments and the Italian and Iberian mafias. The great pecan smiled. There was hope for Europe, yep. Gold never tarnishes, and shady dealings with, in Switzerland. Ah, the Swiss. What can we want for these cowardly, neutralist, peace-loving dudes? Scratch, record scratch, freeze, frame. What do you mean that they're armed to the teeth and have more money than they know what to do with? Give me this Zurich now. And I apologize for this, but I'm going to go and switch on over to get this stuff out of the way, just so we can get this one done. My apologies. Though little Switzerland might not seem like it has much to offer first, the Great Pakan has been recently formed by more approachable allies of Yusuf Yan. The Swiss banking sector will trade with just about anyone, even the Russian states that ostensibly embargo at Germany's behest. Perhaps some of our taxes for development could easily be transferred for, say, keeping in Swiss banks or invested in Swiss businesses. The Swiss capitalists might also be interested in gaining access to our extensive natural resources, and their usually neutral government could certainly have an interest in gaining a future bulwark against pop dominance of Europe. We shouldn't delay any further. Let's get packing. The Caldullo. Um, actually, since we're going to keep you stated, do, do this a whole, actually, a whole bunch right now. Uh, Franco looked much more imposing in the propaganda photos of thought Israeliani. The old man staring in front of him, cane in hand, didn't seem like an imposing figure. However, even though he didn't know a word of Spanish, he heard enough of the Caldillo's voice to know what he, that he was not to be a man to be trifled with. The Spanish, for such a laid-back people, sure loved their formalities. He had been greeted with fine food, a flamenco show, and a drill demonstration from the Iberian army. When he at last sat down with the Caldillo to talk business, he was surprised when the two had a lot in common. Both men had come to power in a time when their nation was gripped in weakness and civil war, a sentiment that resonated in Franco, that he was sure from his ha from handshake that the rare genuine smile he saw from the dictator. The deal was simple. Iberia would formally end its German-directed embargo on the free Russian territories and reckon as a West Russian or West Siberian thief territory as an independent state able to do business with Iberian corporations. Camera crews filmed and shutters flashed as the two dictators shook hands for all of Iberia to see. Two men that had risen from irrelevance to the very top. Perhaps a lesser man would have come back with nothing, but Jabba knew a fellow self-made man when he saw one. It was the cutting of the world, and those that took risks and played hard, and that would win, and together the Spanish bull could make the Russian bear roar again. Arriba, Russia. Contact with Cosa Nostra. La Costa Nostra, our thing in English, is based in Sicily and is one of the oldest, most powerful organized crime organizations in the world. Spreading with the Italian dysphoria from Sicily to Chicago, names like Al Capone or Lucky Luciano come to mind in the eyes of many America Americansi when they think of the Mafia. What do we think of them? Natural business partner, surely. It takes a criminal to know a criminal, although the Costa Nostra accepts only Italians into the family. They've yet to shy away from a good deal. Let's make them an offer they cannot refuse. Cool. Oh, and Africa's died. Oh, well. It's only Africa.
Uh, true tax haven. Isleon had filled out of his place at this table, his neatly pressed suit incomparable to the lavishness of the international tycoons, let alone their diamond-studded wives, all wearing the same painted on smiles. One of the presenters fumbled a paper, beginning to announce the next order for the meeting. Well, and to our newly accepted guests of honor, while the Swiss Alps may never be compared to the Urals, I would like to welcome Mr. Jabba Is... 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 Uh... The Kripa Khan gave a wry, irritated smile as he stood up, champagne in his hand, the glass giving a wine under the pressure of his fingers. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to give a short toast before this evening moves forward. The whole room applauded politely, but the coldness behind their eyes could not betray that this was a test. All of us here, we are all self-built men, men who were given no quarter and took none ourselves, some during the Great Depression. So this silver... A uh, haired monocles nodded, some during the trying times of the Great Patriotic, I mean, <clears throat> Second World War. This time, it was a turn for the men of Isleyan's age to grumble in agreement, and some even now, during the Reich's attempts to get a foothold on both of our doorsteps. Therefore, we must celebrate this liberty, this great gift granted to us, to reckon to be rewarded. Tonight, we will t make, take it easy, but we also must take it now. Isleyan to raise a champagne glass, the tycoons raising theirs and use him. To a free enterprise, ladies and gentlemen. Boats of Brittany. The rogue sister of the pact. The Bretons have a little interest in paying heed to Germany's commands, especially after the franco burgundian War resulted in them getting a border with the nu Reich's nuclear enthusiast problem child in Paris. What they do have is an interest in this profit. Britain weapons are some of the highest quality in the world, shipped in massive war zones around the world. Britain's black market has even infiltrated its tendrils into our own country. Though we've tried to crack down on them in the past due to its negative influences, perhaps we could strike a deal on more equal terms with Britain. If the Bretons can give safe passage into Russia, they will reward us handsomely. The Godfather. I swear, I do not see how your organization could benefit us. Giuseppe let out a puff of smoke and stretched lazily. Isleyani could not could understand the lack of sense of urgency in the mafioso's movements. In the end, the great Balkan has been effectively defanged to enter the Costa Nostra territory. No weapons, no associates, just him. They even took away the imperial coin he kept for good luck. Well, mister. Padre, Giuseppe leaned forward. You will call me Padre. The great Balkan's lips reflectively thinned out, but he really had no choice. If you wanted to speak to the leader of the Sicilian Mafia, Giuseppe Genco Russo, you had to do as a weaker associate rather than a great, greater power. Padre Giuseppe, I believe my nation has many benefits for your business. God, Isleyani hated being sober, he never felt anxious, but the acute feeling that every world was just being judged as a life or death matter did not leave, leave him. After all, behind me is a whole country, huge markets, privileges with my security services, so much untouched land that you can hide your long, longer term merchandise. And what do you want? Then Giuseppe interrupted, his expression unreadable. Well, Isleyani grinned confidently. Arm support, ease trade and diplomacy with your group, as well as information on Italy's dearest further interests and movements. Giuseppe's expression did not change, instead it stayed static as the mafioso considered. Fine, this is does interest me. Suddenly the Padre's tone warmed with a drink to the new partnership. The grip of Conchuco, sure, always wanted to try Prosesco. Prosecco. Birds of a feather. Diplomacy by gold. The Germans preferred diplomacy by the tip of a bayonet, subjecting the subhuman races of Europe and Africa to countless tortures while claiming the pact is for the good of all of Europe. The Japanese promised liberation to all Asian race while saving them for every last drop of profit. The Americans promised freedom and democracy while seemingly go to very undemocratic measures to bring nations into their sphere, willing or otherwise. Though within the halls of power, their leaders deride us as nothing but greedy bandits, and we are at least um, honest about our intentions. We don't ask foreign nations for the servitude, nor ask them to change their ways of all life. We are from goods, and we ask for nothing but payment in return. Perhaps what the world needs for peace is a healthy dose of capitalism, and we are more than happy to provide it. Towards the tips of France. <clears throat> if northern Russia uh, had frozen with rose uh, frozen him with ice, northern France pelted Vadim with slushing rain and howling wind, but unlike northern Russia, he had nothing but a uh, leather jacket to combat the elements, each of his limbs feeling like it was cast from a numb marble. <clears throat> Darn it effing. He swore under his breath as the salt spray uh, salt sprays hit Vadim in the face, another barrage lazily pulling into the port of Saint Malo. The grey waves parting underneath it, several exhausted Breton sailors trudging into port under the, the torrential rain, though one seemed to stay back sitting in one of the crates with a dreary expression. Vadim felt a sudden empathy. Guard duty? The Breton soldier lifted his head, hm? Vadim pointed at the boxes of guns his boss left him on guard duty and with and then at his rifle. Guard duty? The Breton's face lit up with understanding. Ah, Sorrent. Ah, yeah, yeah, surrenders. Vadim nodded. The Breton chuckled, fishing around in his pocket, taking out a cigarette pack and offering it to the equally exhausted Russian. Cigaretten? Sure, Vadim took the cigarette, lighting the Breton's and then his, before turning back towards the Ukraine barge, observing the crates of guns with a bored expression. The Breton turned his back to his, from one crook to another. Let's smoke it up. And see if anything else here, if there's another event here. So, because I'll probably do these ones off screen, just because we can speed this up a little more. But if you want to about these focuses, please go right ahead. Nothing but the best, and of course, ready for war, and which we will do. This one give us a few days, maybe just to see if there's anything else here. 
And we'll get this one because we get more daily arm XP, more command power. But we'll see you when we're at war, probably, with the good old people of Samar. Job was last blow. The Great Pakan stared boredly at the gun barrels pointed at him. Usuyan entered his office behind the group of soldiers that came in first. It's over, Usuyan noted, his hands interlocked behind his back. Jabba, no one's coming. Isuyan on demonstratively. No one as in no one. Your men are all gone. Surrender. Usuyan responded almost mechanically. Isuyan would sign stand from his armchair, ignoring the clicks of the rifles pointed at him. I got a weapon. Usuyan blinked at the Great Pakan's statement. Pardon? I got a weapon, as Ulyana smirked at the soldier's change in demeanor. Many getting nervous and grasping the rifles together. No, you don't. Lucian could generally see where this was going. Oh, yes, I do. I got a weapon. I got a... Suddenly, Ezeliani's hand would dart into his jacket inside pocket. Bang, bang, bang. Grey Pakan fell back, sagging into his armchair, the blood beginning to mix with the whiskey seeping from the bullet hole in the flask he reached into his jacket for. Ezeliani, Usuyan grimaced as the soldiers lowered the rifles. What an effing mess. First, Batov disappears, and now this? Well, it looks like Aslan Usuyan has won. And at this point, we're literally just waiting to invade uh, these guys over here, so... And it looks like we're running out of things to build, so which is kind of sucks, but that's all right. Um, yeah, overall not too bad. Yeah, we have plenty of civvy stuff right now. We'll go build a lot more factories. I shall return. Bodtov leaned down in his car. Several bullets ricocheted off the truck's door. The driver took him pa turning to panic. The only thing stopping him from turning to look was a discipline hammered into him. Sir, are you keep driving? Gosh darn it! Getting back up. Uh, Bodtov le leaned out of the truck window and fired a couple rounds at those following him. One of the trucks swerving off the road as the bandit driver on the tail visibly sagged in the seat. We're almost at the border. Batov's concentrated expression persisted as he fired a couple more rounds. Do you see the border guard? I do. Good. If they play our, if we play our cards right, they'll focus on the Usulani before they try to follow us. 300 meters. Several of the army men at the checkpoint would notice their approach. 200 meters. Batov did not look back at where they were driving, using the extra seconds to chamber another round, so leaning out of the window. 100 meters. Batov ran out of ammo in the magazine, getting back inside. Zero. The truck's front smashed through the barrier before the blockade trucks were able to shut off the escape route. Machine guns roaring as they started up just a little too late. The general's pursuers caught in the fire. The truck continued a couple minutes before turning off the road into the forest. The driver and Batov checking for damage. Well, so what now? Batov raised his eyes. Now we try to find out. Or find a find out way. Maybe even a way back when the time comes. So basically, we're just going to go to war with them again. Um, how strong are these guys? A darn mess. Usuyan felt like a headache traveled up his temple. Say that again. He escapes her. Ilo somehow looked even more disappointed than his employer, and even more shaken up with his tie crumpled. Everything was ready. The officers were bought off. The ammo was taken away. If it wasn't for one of those cowards affecting to him, we could have succeeded. Usuyan did not respond. His gaze cast thoughtfully into the distance. Ilo took it as rage. I I'm ready to take my full responsibility. The courage snapped out of it, standing up enough. For all the mess that you've created, the main goal has been achieved. For all intended purposes, our arm, the army's ours. And besides, Usuyan walked around the table, slipping Ilo on the shoulder in an uncommonly friendly manner. That son of a sort of fawn was always a slimy piece of work. Just getting him out of it is an achievement. He looked like surprisingly. Thank, thank you, sir. All right, the Kurt straightened his creases on his jacket, clearing his throat. Without the army, that, that he is alone. Uh, for once, Usuyan smiled. Time to clean house. Nice. We didn't need a lot of manpower to take out these guys, but yeah, different flag changes. Kind of nice. Gone for a circle. Um, Anatoly Chikosov couldn't tell what he felt when he entered the office that used to belong to the Great Khan, or Great Pakhan, now taken over by Usuyan. The whole space became much cleaner, not a single empty bottle, loose document, or even speck of dust on the surfaces of the tables and bookcases. You called me, sir? Well, his demotion from security minister under Usuyan had been humiliating. He was not sure what to expect now. When the coup occurred, several journalists had thought of defecting, of escaping, or following Batov, but even with the respect, all the respect Chek Chekosov had for the man, the debt dent on his pride began to burn with an even greater strength than before. He stayed, and now he would have to see what they would do to him. Though he considered dying for his spite is also a foolish thing, really? Usuyan wrote from his seat, I have good news for you, Mr. Mr. Chekosov. While some of your colleagues that have been in post and attempted to resist the coming of a better Russia, you had stayed loyal to Yugra. The businessman walked up to the thief general, offering his hand for a shake. We appreciate the loyalty, Mr. Chekosov. And it totally blinked, shaking the hand absentmindedly, still feeling a little starstruck at the new ruler who noticed him so well. And for loyalty, there's reward. We offer you the spot of security minister, which has been taken away from you so unceremoniously. Chekosov suddenly sensed the fake on uh, Usuyan's face, while the lips were smiling and the emperor eyes were empty. In the end, thank you, sir. I will begin my duties then. Usuyan nodded. Very well. I would like to report by tomorrow morning. Chekosov turned on his heel, marching out of the room, jaw clenched, wondering, no, knowing that if Bata was still here then, forever second best. See what happens. Let's see what we do with these guys. How strong is this division? Pretty strong. Not not extremely strong, but pretty strong. This is a much more strong division. This is a 40 combo. This is probably 20 combo. Decrease in poverty? Nice. A toast to our economists. And actually, like, money-wise, they're doing definitely okay. Winner takes all. Not bad. Oh, 12.8. Not, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Okay, so we're winning immediately. Nice. Oh, we got to keep boosting this one up, though. We could cut down civilian spending, though. 
Or we just don't boost it up anyways. Political power probably won't mean... It. Actually, no, we're going to need the political power. We need to core a lot of stuff here. And then we'll cut stuff down. Cool. Uh, losses include 9,000 versus 1,000, 10,000 for them. Samara's so actually really just right on the border there, huh? Not bad. If you could, just beat the crap out of him. I would love that so much. Nice. Also, I did make sure that actually Kimra was going to lose this time because I'd rather fight the Far Eastern Republic for now. Ooh. Oh, you're still losing here. Alright then, whatever. Samara would be pretty nice this time of year. Uh, can you go here and just go over there, maybe? We don't have a lot of divisions, but it might just work. We'll see what happens. Keep them in place if you can. You guys go here. You guys go all the way over here and then come there, just in case. Take some Mata. That'd be nice. Very nice. Um, where are we at for losses? 15,000 versus 54,000? That's not bad. And section Oman. Ah, oh, yeah. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. You. Ah, oh, you guys are going to fish it up anyways. Ooh. Oh, that's their division. Okay. Not bad, not bad. Overall, quite a bit of green. Not bad. We have 30 divisions. Ooh, plant. Nice. And now we're out of manpower. That kind of sucks. Just in case. Get some better guns, too. Didn't quite get the next level of guns just yet, but that's alright. Things happen. I want you all to hold. Don't attack yet. Just hold for now. Get more Get more on the line. Get some more planning done. And then we'll strike again. That's a lot of losses for them, which is pretty nice. Actually, do they still have 30? Up to 30. Up to 30. Not bad. Yes, yes, but yes. Good, 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 good. Nice. Five. Four. Three. We're just going to do, like, just coordinated attacks for now. Okay, you won anyways. That's nice. Sock intern. Nice. Jap U.S. Japanese Treaty signed. Should be able to win there regardless. Uh, you guys should be able to win here regardless, maybe. Just pounding them pretty easily. Something we'd like to see. Or, or just go in general. Okay, cool. Improve academic base. Pretty nice, too. Something to be celebrated. Overall, we're still winning pretty darn well. Like it. Love it. Own it. Eat it. 200,000 is pretty good. We definitely have more divisions than them now, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Anything else here we really care about? 12.8, not bad. I would like to get one more thing of... Oh, the power struggle still here, I guess. Or, or just just leave us. Or come back. Yes, I'm bothered with that. Yeah, it's not bad. Well, since we're here anyways, we can't really build too much. I'm going to start building some cities. We don't have this place court at all, but that's alright. Cool. We're gonna do it later. We'll put a lot of airports, air bases in our territory, but whatever, it's fine. Cool. How many have died? Two and a quarter million versus fifty thousand from us. Hey, I captured the arsenal. Nice. Kind of hurts us though, but whatever. Any attack and defense? No, we do have thirty divisions. Good, good, good. But now we have a tank division too. Oh, awesome. Let's get to it. Look at all that. I knew we'd have to core all that stuff. Extra influence in Kazakhstan. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go and do that. Go and do this. Thank you. The Navy and TNO is pretty worthless, but Russia's new chief. At last, the Russia's journey to the power and strength has been truly begun. Under the wise and enriching leadership of the new, our new great Pakam, Aslan Usoyam, we have at last had the German dogs to our west to incite a new lands and territories to put under the administration of the transitional government. So long as we keep our trust in pa Papa Hassan, things can only get better from here. And it looks like they had a kind of a generic nuclear uh, weapons type of thing, so we'll see what happens. For focuses, I should say, at least. Actually, do you have any... Oh, no, no tanks. No tank guys, that's fine. And it wonders, alright. Well, Victor. Uh, actually, Reconnaissance, Harsh Leader, yeah. Oh, I can promote you instead. Babushkin, Vasily, yes. Pretty good on attack, not gonna lie, pretty good. Pretty darn good. Cool. What else new chief? If you're about these ones, please go right ahead. And then this one, of course. I'll get this one first. And then establish facilities, a foundation for research, 
Address the uranium problem. Expand the Kurgan mines. Source for materials. Chase the sun. Good stuff. Good stuff. Eh, more manpower. Beautiful. Cool. And since we're here anyways, go and do that. Train. And I'm not going to train the tanks because they're, they're going to get demolished with what, what, what we're about to do here. So, already engineers. That'd be good. And tanks. 40s. We're going to lose so many tanks. It's not even going to be funny. We could go SP artillery, but we're not going to fight Germany, so I'm kind of okay with uh, doing that. That's fine. Cool. Just go in. Kill them off now. For this one, we won't cut this one down just yet. Um, do we really need more... Si oh my gosh. That is so bad. I destroy our enemies. Reinforce the chain of command. Uh, Reintegrating the former soldiers and officers of the previous West Russian government has not been an easy task. Those personnel deemed too ideologic fanatical must be purged from our ranks before they can harm uh, continued profitable operations. But sometimes we must lose a little money to gain back a big reward. We'll send all the manpower and money necessary to ensure a smooth transition of, power of former West Russian soldiers into our own ranks. And prepare for the ultimate reunification of Russia, all under the absolute leadership of our great Pakan. Because why not? Honestly, it's better for now. It's fine. Wow, we're actually losing political power every single day. That sucks. Not bad, though. Not bad. And finish our land auction. How are we doing here? Still building up more civvies? Civvies are super poor for this stuff. Nice. Good. Keep building, keep building, keep building. All right, establish close facilities. Yes, please. To destroy our enemies. Unfortunately, not all our new citizens think so highly of our new leadership. Thankfully, our reconstruction programs and a few well-placed bribes have gotten many previously descending figures to steady employment, bread, and a roof over their heads. Things that many Russians lacked not long ago. For those that still cling to ridiculous ideas like communism, fascism, or liberalism, and seek to reimplement their dead ideals by terrorism and force of arms. However, we shall fight fire with fire. No rebel will escape alive. As none should escape alive. Period. How much longer do we have to core this stuff? Oh, just a day. That's nice. So now, wow, we were losing almost... It went from almost two. Wow. That's nuts. 31 infantry, infantry divisions, not bad. So now we should really be able to make quite a few more things here. Nice. Keep making some of the other stuff too. That's fine for now. Cool. From bandits. Though our origins have been as mere criminals and bandits, we've become something greater. We are now leaders of a, a great deal of territory, and we must strive for something higher than just being gangsters and fighting over streets for extra money. No, we must evolve into something more unified and civilized. Oh, never mind. I guess we're going to have to struggle against Kamarov, even though I literally deleted the entire army over here, but whatever. Go figure. I literally deleted the entire army for Kamarov, and they still won. Jesus Christ. There we go. We're back to warp. That's fine. Probably should stop training, probably. Swing core. Kazakhstan! Yay! Um, we'll wait for that one, maybe. Oh, they war with them. A Kazakh Soviet social. Okay, they're at war, too. Can we go in? There we go. Destroy our enemies from bandits. Most of them do the stuff, we just need core everything here first, so. Get a better rifles, go and grab some of that too. Nice. To businessmen. To, what is crime but a business banned by the law? Whether it's selling drugs, murder for hire, protecting the small businesses that are the backbone of our economy. We were all just in it for the money. Now that we're the law. We no longer have to worry about those pesky things like criminal codes, after all. We're just all trying to make ends meet, aren't we? Pretty much. Wow, this is a mess. Holy crap. The birth of a corporation? How about our new ventures? With a greatly expanded pool of manpower and resources, it's time we begin expanding the offers of our company to bigger and better things. It's a common tenet of business that one wants to innovate or die. Given that we have very little interest in dying, the only matter that remains is, is what lines of work our new rush will find itself in. Just going for everything we can right now. It's fine. Head on out, spread on out. The kingdom of Siberia is going to have to die, die, die.
Babushkin. This is going to be a god awful mess. I can already tell. It's going to be terrible for us. A long way from home. Lucio Yon sat at his desk, his finger interlocked with the freezing night, howling powerlessly, powerlessly, uh, powerlessly against the glass of the window, the oil lamp casting a warm glow across his office. In such moments, he would have simply cast his mind to the past, to the old world siren call pulling him back. Tbilisi, 24 years old, young and inexperienced, the next thing he knew, one of the pigs had grabbed him and beat him into submission. Stealing pigs didn't give him much, the short death row did not reform him, but it sure as heck taught him a lot about life. Azlan allowed himself to thoughtful scowls he stared into the flickering flames. The Tiflis three were strange beasts in his eyes. In one hand, their death got his jailer's head torn off. In the other hand, while he may have escaped, his homeland lay under the same monster that ruined it since he was a child. When the jail guards got caught off to fight, it did not take long to overpower the green boys they pulled up instead, and then he ran. Oh, he ran, he sure did. Tricking across the Caucasus, further north, ran past the constantly changing warlord borders, with fake names and fake currency, meaning many remembering few. Usu Yan shook off the nostalgia, but as his hand reached to extinguish the flame of the lamp, muttered, Tbilisi, Nzaz da Vedibis Mikario. Tbilisi, the sun, side of sun and roses, a change of style. Well, he was no abandoned no more. He had at least looked the part of the corporatist he wanted to be. The flat cap went off first. He wasn't some newspaper boy to wear such a thing anymore. The dusty jacket, the worn out unbuttoned shirt, it was all signs of his banditry still coming through. He was no criminal, for sure. There was still a knock at the door, though. Come in, Usui unbuttoned up his shirt and turned, noticing Elo's eyes wandering about his boss's new look. Well, you certainly look quite a bit more official, I would even say. Elo rubbed his chin, clearly hesitating on saying something. Go on. You certainly look grand, sir, Elo said, as if he was taking a step through a minefield. Usuyan furrowed, furrowed his eyebrows and turned to the mirror. While his suit did look very well on him, it also highlighted his more grand features for sure, the curved side. Better an overweight visage than a shifty one, I suppose. Oh, look at that. He changed. Yay. Nice clothes. Supply on the Kurds. Though we were all Russian company, your great pecan is not actually an ethnic Russian. Though he hails from George, Aslan Usulyan is of Kurdish descent, and so is a soft spot for the plight of the press people in the Kurdish area of the homeland. With the rock in the Middle East in flames, we now have the perfect chance uh, to uh, begin running high quality weapons and ethnic Kurdish volunteers to fight for the freedom of Kurdistan, and perhaps gain even a potential very, very profitable stake in this oil and blood rich region of the world. Nice. All the world's miners. If there's one thing Russia doesn't lack, it's natural resources. Millions of our subjects are already employed in, in mining every kind of metal and mineral there is, and yet so much of it lies in stockpiles. We already have more than enough for our own production, so naturally, it would be best to start selling, and we're not picky. American corporations, Japanese saibatsus, Breton merchants, we don't care. If you can pay the price tag, we'll sell you all the fine metals you can handle. We're businessmen. We were doing business. Ooh, the unbreakables. I want more political power now, but ooh... Well, let's leave it there for now. The Unbreakables, you look older, DR. Aslan noted, looking at the man uh, unloading the trucks of equipment in the distance, the smog of the early morning factory starting up make the machines looking like giant bugs. And your Kurdi is rusty, brother. None of us are getting any younger. DR took out a pack of cigarettes, putting one between his lips, Usu Young grimaced, and looked away. I simply wanted to offer you an exit if you need it. I caught myself landing in the Russian waste. You can walk out of this and, and leave the sunny lands of the Black State behind. The gray haired man lit a cigarette, chuckling as he puffed it on it. Usu Young scowled and grew. This cause, our cause, it's. Save your breath, brother. You just breathe more smog. You can tell me how terrible Caucasian is as much as you want. It won't matter, considering I live it. DR would stand up, wiping his hands in the camouflage pants. Georgia wasn't all that great, that being that to them were not their own, but in the end, this fight, it's not just for us, brother. The old man pulled the strap of the machine gun over his shoulder, taking a few more puffs of the cigarette. This isn't about being Kurdish or Georgian or hating the Germans. Men had stood and died to free us again. Set to free us again. The Tavlis three let not one single scream when they hoisted them up. So, DR turned back to Usuyan. How am I to run away when the fight is just warming up with, the, all, with your guns and all? Uh, I don't know. Usuyan swapped his speech from Kurdi to George in the older man and turned to looking away before giving him a slap on the shoulder and grinning. The fight is not over, Islam. Not with you on our side. We will be free, brother. Just, just watch us. Now go. Your path in Russia awaits you, just as mine awaits me here. Yeah, sucks for the Kurds there. Anything for the right price. If we must be honest, we are still criminals at our roots, after all. Isn't a criminal just a businessman without enough money to stay out of jail? Though we are more than happy to sell the world cheap goods, cheap alcohol, and good quality metals and weapons. If your tastes are, say, less legal, we won't judge. Drugs? We'll get you higher than a kite. Prostitutes? Well, we do, do they say Russian women are, more, are the most beautiful in the world? Need you to kill someone? We'll get our hands bloody if you can afford to pay our hitman. We can't promise we'll get you the price your wallet can appreciate for those sorts of things, but chances are. If you're seeking these kinds of services, you're probably rich enough, rich enough for us to have no right to question your financial decisions. Just get in line, and one of our agents will see you shortly. Vultures. As the piggish mining executives argue over which parts of Russia they rip open when their reunification is complete, Aslan realized that he truly is, supremely, did not care for these people. 
The Germans and the Japanese were more likely to use slave labor than the higher Russians, and the Americans would probably underpay them. His thoughts were interrupted, however, by the demands of the meeting, those of the large Reichswerke uh, HG man. All right, Mr. Usalan, we've uh, looked over the geological data here and began the man before trailing off. His Russian was so par, and we would like to mine here. He pointed out on the map as he spoke here and here. He pointed the three hillsides areas near the Muscovy and Russian border. With a disillusion of still loyal and dogmatic voice, he continued. The Reich requests that you generously give us the mining rights for these three sites. The oil and other resources here uh, are requested by the Reichstag itself. It will be considered, my friend, Usalan replied, as cordially as he could for such a man, however. I would still like to hear from the others before I make my final decision. Mr. Davenport from Free... Port McMoran. As words, the American, a lean man, obviously high in cocaine, stood and pointed to the spot on the Kamchatka Peninsula. It says here that the diamond and borax deposits center at this point. Where's my finger? I want. We want a mine right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You let us? Again, my friend, we must hear the request of all parties, Ossian replied, with more control than the German. Also, Mr. Osto, you actually run the mining company you represent. What do you wish to mine? Uh, Takakashi. Takakishi. Also, head of the Oslo Mining Company, rather than pointing on the map, began his request. There's a hill near the Manchurian border, one with a yellowish scar on the side. We were asked to enter mine on that hill, which is located, he pointed to the hill on the map, some 290 kilometers away from the border, right there. Lucian stood for a moment. Given the appearance of deep thought, however, the mining op operations were far from his thoughts. Of course, these people could mine there, even for the Germans. They had no clue how much money they were going to make him. He finally answered, Gentlemen, you have the permission of our organization to mine where you have each requested. The Reich, Sphere, and Free World will have their minds. With these words, Ossian walked out, and several underlings rushed to the, each of the executives, giving them dozens of forms and paperwork to sign. For the first time in a while, Ossian smiled. Money. Money. And the birth of a corporation. Now that the total unification seems inside, it's time we drop any facade about our real intentions. In order to ensure the security, stability, and continuing profitability of the Russian state, all economic assets will be appropriated and reorganized under the control of the all-Russian transi transitional or transnational company. All will be fairly compensated for the compliance for a safe and secure Russia. Yes. 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 There you, there you go. Keep making those ones for now. Oh, we have some more millies. Oh, we must have cored more stuff. Yeah, that's right. Bulgaria, huh? Um, what are we missing? Main battle tanks. Is that it? Planes, maybe. Oh, we got so many crappy planes here. Ah, uh, just business. Prost! Obs lifted the champagne glass. Gnawing on his usual cigar, his little eyes darting from one company man to another, a knowing grin trudging up to his lips. Press Flick slurred. The corporation leader certainly had too many whiskeys, his usual fiery temper now flickering in all directions like a flame in a strong wind, the glass between his fingers in a very unsure position. Press Geilenberg looked at the most modest of them all, the glass of German beer being quite symbolic for the state corporation puppet. Certainly, Siemens even stood up a little, his glass of wine held with a steady hand, with his cheeks slightly red, the old man also having relaxed with the coming of alcohol. And to the destruction of those F, Flick opened his mouth about to go on another rant. Yes, Friedrich, the lesser races, but let the guests of honor speak first. Obs interrupted, stopping the situation from devolving further, cursely waiting for the last corporation leader to raise a toast. Also young grimaced as he looked past his new business partners and picked up his glass of water, uninterested in alcohol. Well, gentlemen, I suppose for us, Obs was almost glimmering to future success. A drink to further profits. Profits, profits, profits. You got a lot of tanks, man. Nice. Hmm. Academic base? Why not? Tax everything? Oh my god. Exploited taxation? Uh, let's get a efforts toward centralization. The only way things in Java Isiliani was a truly disastrous and degenerate system. Individual pakans lord over the little pieces of Russia like feudal lords, treating the people under them like serfs. We may be ruthless capitalists, but we are not reactionaries. From now on, Russia's governance shall be strictly managed from the top, with a bureaucracy based on merit and loyalty to our regime. Corruption and laziness will no longer be tolerated. Creeping roots. The F do you mean we got to answer for every bullet? Valigan almost spat with rage as he slammed his rifle on the desk. Valigan, tell me, uh, Zatun put down the smuggled porno mag, his expression showing that he would rather be anywhere but here. Explain to some mook why the arsenal started to keep tabs. Valigan, tell me, do you get paid? Well, yeah, since last month. Right, so so no more random looting raids. That also means instead of letting you blockheads take any weapons and ammo like you like, we gotta collect it, mark it off, sell it off. Right, Valgan made a thinking face. Zatun continued the local, the logical chain. So that means we can buy ammo for your guns because you work for the territory, right? And if we buy you ammo instead of you taking it, whose ammo is it? Valgan clenched his jaw. Zatun noticed a spark of understanding. That's right. It's not your ammo. It's our ammo. And if you're using our ammo, you're borrowing it. You blockhead. Every time you chamber around, that's territory budget being fired through those skulls. And what do we do with the money if we're not using it? The band soldiers sighed dejectedly. We count it. Good job, Valgan. And maybe you're not completely mentally deficient. Now get out and stop bothering me. Last time I heard, they'll be counting rifles soon. And forces on every street. Oh, that's gonna hurt us. Oh, the cost. Oh, no. We get more money, but it hurts our political power, stability, construction speed. Oh, my gosh. No, we're gonna do foundation for research first. Holy crap, that's so bad. 
Oh my gosh, we are really a criminal syndicate, aren't we? That is so bad. So flippin' bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, I want to cut down the cost. I mean, we're making more divisions because we're going to definitely need it against Kumarobo, but... Holy crap. We better have a lot of planes for this. Um... We're going to need a lot of planes. Holy crap. Oh, i do that one too. Yeah, they're both are fine for those two. How about fighters? we got some pretty crappy fighters, not going to lie. Um, boom, boom. Cut, cut, double up. Mm, we could get down military spending, but we'll wait first. All right, so where are we at with this stuff? There we go. There we go. Nice. Another tank division? Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. We don't have the uh, political power. Or no, enough enough equipment, really, to do what we need to do there. And research integration, we'll close that one for now. Foundation for research. Address the uranium problem, because we can. Got quite a few factors, which is nice. Could use more, but that's all right. So make it more. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Good, 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 good. Industry, grab this one. You can build more factories. It's all for that budget, man. All for the budget. 258 is not bad. Yeah. This is not going to be a fun fight. We do have a professional army, but still. And as you can tell, this is a pretty long episode compared to like other ones, just because I only wanted to do this in a single episode here, so... That'd be kind of cool. One thing I just thought of, if you could like raid other warlords for like small little territories, but that would that would create a lot of territory space that you would need to raid for. I don't know. Like you take one, literally a single tile at a time. Sixty-seven. That's not bad. Address the uranium problem. Uh, let's do this one. Get more infrastructure. Infrastructure is pretty nice. Expand the Kurgan mines. That's usually pretty good to get. I love that our debt's not going up by that much. Nineteen million. Nice. Make one more and we'll start having a deficit. Hey, there it is. Yes, yes. And August will soon be able to just start going to war with these guys, which would be great, 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 great. So these infantry divisions looking pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. These tank divisions looking pretty darn decent as well. <sighs> I just don't want to fight Kimrobo. By this time, they've already got their, their normal. I, like I said earlier, I deleted their divisions so that the, like recruits could win, but at this point, they're, they're back up to where they were earlier, so... Yeah, it's not going to be great. Onega, that's fine. Let's keep building, building, building. Even though we are trying to make more divisions, I can't really cut down the debt too much. It's fine. Do we fully stocked up yet? Nope, that's not good. Kurgan Mines, source foreign materials. Slowly adding on more places to build here. 80% is pretty good, though. There you go. And I'll go with one more. 80% mm, is pretty good. Enough manpower. We should do okay. Actually, since we're here, we're going to create an agency as well. That'll help us out. Apologies ahead of time for being a little rage against these guys. Because it's going to suck. It's going to suck a little hard. Here goes Iraq. Nice. Not bad, not bad. Keep building, keep building. 26 billion in debt, not bad. Alright, after source four materials, we're going to chase the sun and help our industrial uh, expertise. Because that would be a great thing. God, I hope it's not like the last time. It was so bad fighting them. Ooh, I still went up a little more, though. Mm, not good. Alright. And forces on every street. Oh, why? Actually, ooh. Yeah, we're still building stuff up. It might seem ironic, given that we are ex-prisoners, but it seems that we must provide Russia with a new police to fix the abject lock of law and order she has suffered from for the last two decades. Many crimes and felonies alike are at the all-time high, from pickpocketing to outright murder and rape. This isn't the way of the thieves, at least not anymore. We'll create a security uh, subsidiary of the IRTNC, to ensure that on every street our laws are obeyed, our workers are safe, and anyone with unprofitable ideas are quickly dealt with before they can spread dangerous ideas like democracy or, heaven forbid, workers' unions. Not the workers' unions! Nice. 
Oh, this is going to balloon up the debt so much. I mean, we're going to make a lot, qu hopefully, quite a bit more money, but still. Still. Tax everything that moves. When government and business are one, taxes form an important part of the revenue for a company. Given the sole objective of a corporation is to make profit for its shareholders, it only makes sense that we should bring as much profit as we absolutely can. Especially since running a country is no cheap task, if we can tax it. Then we tax as much as we can. If you can't pay it, well, you can always work your, off your taxes for us. Your salaries will be kept for safe, safe keeping until your owed taxes are paid in full to the company. Oh, wow, look at that, yeah. Keep expanding it. Nice. Reminds me of payday. Alright, so now we're at... Oh my god! 10 billion! Jesus Christ! Facade of a good government. Much as it jacks up our operating costs, running a country is uh, does come with certain responsibilities. People need protection from harm, a roof under their head, a job to work at schools. Uh, for the children, pensions for the old and sick. We're no charity, but if welfare and justice keep our workers productive and healthy, then surely these investments will bring a fr fruitful return. At least we get the political power back, but at this point it doesn't really matter too much, to be honest, man. I'm gonna say it's holy crap. Everything has a high cost, man. Yeah, that didn't even help us out that much, honestly. Oh god, dang it. Profit in the wind. Ah, can you smell it? Profit is one sweet, sweet smell and stronger than ever now. Who the heck would have thought it was just a little over a decade ago we were slaving away in some frozen heck hole in Forkuta? Now we're the undisputed masters of Russia. We made her a force to be reckoned with in the business to rival the largest corporations on earth. All of Russia's in our grasp and we're no longer just hearing profit in the wind. We're here in a storm. Nice. This is going to suck so hard. Cold days, thought of a good government. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's actual things. Nice. Well, if that's the case, looks like we got to prepare for the war. Reunification of Russia. More manpower, more strength, more divisions. The grand showdown, you pretty much what's going to be. Project Millennia. Yes. Spend, spend it all. It's fine for now. It's fine. The triumph of capitalism. Well, we did. We've stabilized the government and prepared our future plans. Now our greatest challenge until it now lays east. We must start mobilizing our forces on the Siberian border and prepare for the incoming struggle. Despite our arduous task with the support of all corporations and capitalists around the world, we all prevail. Not sure what we're going to really do with our political power now, but whatever. Time for a rebrand. Air was filled with cigarette, cigar smoke. Radio played old soul music while Usulian sat in his office looking outside the window. He speckled or spectated the scene outside. Soldiers marching towards their duties. A while on the street, people walked around, going to their jobs and going home. He had a big, proud smile on his face. He ruled them all, high above all the others in the way he only dreamed of as a boy. His calm was broken by someone knocking on the door. Come in! Usulian shouted as he turned around to face the doors. It was Devdari, uh, his right hand man. Everything, everything is ready, sir. We are waiting for you to arrive. Oh, Devdari, my good old Devdari, he said while lighting up another cigar. You see all this? Do you see what we hold in our hands? This power that some leaders will just be able to dream about? This power that comes from some leaders, uh, yeah, he got it from a chair. After all these years of fighting, uh, it is uh, it is time for a big move, for a big centralization. It seems it is time for to ran our company. As he finished his little speech, he proceeded to the meeting that Devdari informed him about, a toast for future investments. The Russian transitional city known as the Edenaya Sveroskia Transnationalnaya Kompanya. The oh, United All Russian Transitional Com Transnational Company. That's a gigantic icon. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah, we'll do the best we can. That's not bad. Thirteen point three. That's even better. So I'm not feeling terrible about that. I mean, Nine billion is pretty bad, but like, I want to be able to build as fast as possible. Just build our biggest venture. Ossian, dressed in all formals with a proud smile, headed towards the conference room. As he entered the room, of course, all politicians and generals uh, sitting at the table stood up, greeting him with respect. He sat at the head of the table, sound spread through the room with only the sound of papers moving beyond being heard. Gentlemen, he said, clearing his throat, I think it's finally time for us to speak about our opponents in Siberia. Our mighty state grew stronger over the recent period of time, and we can, we should, start preparing for the war that I see as the biggest one yet. But we must not underestimate our opponents, who use these years to build up their own military and industry, thus posing a big threat to us. But let us not be discouraged by that sight. We will crush not only our most immediate advisors, adversaries, but every other madman that would dare to stand our way towards the final utmost uh, conquest of all of Russian lands. A small commotion appeared as he made his pause in his speech. Some people didn't accept it well. 
The others looked up at him with a more or less hidden, well hidden smile. Whispers filled the room, slightly breaking the silence, and Usulian continued talking. Gentlemen, I hereby advise that we immediately start preparing ourselves for the upcoming storm. We need our factories pumping out more guns, men, our men tough as steel. Our general's ready to lead these same men to the battle. That said, the meeting is over. The fate of this country rests upon your shoulders, so don't screw this up. After a brief moment of silence, Usulian stood up and left the room with a quick step. The rest of the men present, present remained there for a couple other minutes, discussing what they just heard. This is going to be tough, my friend. Oh, it's going to be tough against Kemerovo. Oh boy, I'm not looking forward to this at all. Absolutely not. But it's going to come no matter what, so we best be ready for it. Oh yeah, we're going to need a lot of this stuff. Forgot about it. My bad. There you go. Good luck with that. Making about, uh... Almost roughly 90 day, not bad. Keep making them civvies. You're not you're nowhere near done yet. We get under nine billion, that'd be pretty good. Alright, let's keep going with this stuff for now. Keep training. Until they literally probably go to war with us. So yeah, it's not gonna be great. But can we improve anything else here? Uh, three and a half. Uh, research facilities probably not. Oh, agriculture is modern, ag modern agriculture already. Barbie is already pretty not bad. Industrial equipment maybe, probably not, probably not. I would love to get a Spartan army, but that's alright. I just hope we can do well here. That's all I want. That's all I want us to do. Well. Oh, well, I'll look at that. We're definitely less than nine billion now. That's nice. We're not. We're nowhere near done this though. I gotta do that. Oh, less. Last war, we can only hope that's, that we win. And we will boost up the civilian uh, military budget. We'll probably cut the civilian budget. We'll boost up the military one. 8.44, 8.36, not bad, not bad. We have 38 infantry divisions and 3 40 combat with tank divisions. Not bad. Strike Siberia? Yeah, we could. If you give it just a little bit of time, they will probably go to war with us. So don't I want to be on the defensive? Just in case we got plenty of manpower for now. Um, these divisions are probably pretty darn thick. I'm just worried about this war, man. There you go. A few more plans would be pretty nice. Pretty darn nice. We can try it anyways. It's fine. Even if we not gonna do that I mean, initially it's fine oh there goes Iran goodbye Iran oh that went up a little more oh we made more infantry divisions that's why not bad we a radar station around here oh we have plenty on that side already cool and going and do that one I guess Omsk is that really Omsk I think it is Omsk yeah it is Omsk I don't know this map too well Keep building, keep building, keep building. 8.6. Oh, 8 billion. Oh, that's not bad. So they're going to go to war with us. They're going to go. Oh, my goodness. It's not going to be good. Uh, get some air down here. As soon as they go, we go to war, they go to war with us. We'll just boost this up immediately. You get more attack and defense, which is going to be super important. Military spending factor is fine. More output is worth it. 8 billion. Oh, we're at war. It's not gonna be good. Can you guys go here. Yeah, not bad. We just have to be extremely careful about this. Go right there if you can. That'd be great. Send you in as, in as well. Nice. First one. Three. Di oh, three divisions. That's not bad. Oh, you're gonna lose there, but oh, what really matters? Oh God, is that we defend? All that matters. About oh wow. Holy crap, how do they defeat us so fast when we have air superiority? I'm just gonna do that, it's fine. Keep boosting for now. We've suffered how many? 15,000 casualties. Holy crap, how? Alright, you wanna do that? We just have to be very, very careful here. Very, 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 very careful. Seriously. All right. Die. Die for our amusement. All right. There you go. Die too. All right. Not bad. 
Not great. Oh yeah, they're definitely attacking us now. Oh boy. Oh boy. Under 30,000 versus 40,000 from us is not bad. Uh, how much manpower do they have? They probably have quite a bit. Up to 70 divisions. 70,000 manpower. Um, 70,000 manpower is basically nothing once they, like, they get blitzed. So. Could you guys go into here and do this as well? It would be pretty nice if you could, yeah. They are... They're basically doing probing attacks, what it looks like. So far, not bad. Not bad. Um, do some of that anti-air as well. It is 71. It's more of that, too. More factory output would be very nice. 135,000 losses. Not too bad. Not too not too shabby. Uh, I don't want you to do that one. Go all up there. Nice. Good. Ooh, that's not good. What? How can we not win here? There you go. 60,000 versus 200,000. Ooh, I'm seeing something here. I'm seeing something definitely here. Get the tanks in there. Go here. Go there. Doesn't matter. You're going to have to force the fence, son. Because these guys got to die immediately. Not sure why you're moving. Alright. All that matters is we hold the line. If we lose all them tanks, so be it. So be it. Nice. Third of a million have died for them. Good, good, good. They're out of manpower now. They're still attacking. This thing's probably not looking great. Not terrible, though. Let's go two more divisions, maybe. Let them keep probing those little attacks. Oh, hold, hold, hold. Don't move. No, I told you not to, I told you not to move, you ding-dongs. Uh, 380,000. Not bad. Not bad. They lost exactly 380,000. Let's move these guys down first. Ooh, the infantry's not looking very good. Especially those that attack. Not good at all. Not good. Don't want to get too confident with this just yet. Oh, you're up there. Okay. That's interesting. How did you get defeated here? What? Okay, so that's still a division there. It's not bad. Good. Over there, half a million, which is nice. You can do them because it doesn't matter. Can we do a general attack? No, we cannot. So, oh my goodness. I understand why they're just so flipping strong. Why? Come up here. Be very careful with it. That's development phase. It's fine. We've got plenty of political power for this. Manpower is looking not too bad still. So. Plenty of air power, too. Alright, so give the guys a little bit of time. They can't replenish their losses just because they kill off all their manpower, which is nice. We probably should get some logistics because they're looking pretty bad around here, too. So, boom, and then boom. I need, ooh. Beef them up. Become a beefcake. Nice. There you go. You can start the attack. It's fine. Doesn't matter. Good. Not bad. Um. There you go. Hundred thousand losses versus five hundred fifty thousand. Not bad. Five, four, three. I don't want to wait longer. There you go. Nice. Since you're here, anyways. How about the attack? Yes. Don't let them move. Will the tanks get in there pretty quickly? 
Come on. There you go. That's good. I don't want to try a general attack, but I do want to try a general attack, so. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's try it. Probably a really bad idea. It's going to kill off a lot of manpower. And we did get more breakthrough doing it like this, so. The loss is going to be quite high here, probably. You should easily be able to destroy this division. I don't like it when the AI cheats, so. Keep building, keep building, keep building. Losses, 150,000 probably pretty soon. They're two-thirds of a million dead, which is good. Anything here? Nope. Nope. Keep spending for now, it's fine. Not bad. Could be a lot worse. Could be a lot, lot worse. They have 21 divisions max. Not bad. And the divisions that they do have left, not very good. It's from what we see, of course. If I get rid of the construction budget, we still would have a deficit for now. 77,000, not bad, not bad. You just like go all the way up here. Just go, just go to Siberia. Like all the way up high, 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 high in Siberia. Cool. Better anti air is very good as well. We're starting to run out of manpower, which sucks. But. Oh, well, oh I forgot to get better artillery. Dang it. A little better than the last time we did this. I mean, it's still not great, but still. Here. Building the conquered territories. Here, we're going to take you over and build up your territories. So. You better appreciate it. 15 billion, huh? That's a lot. There are what? 17 divisions max? 800,000 losses? Not bad. Not great, but not bad. There you go. You guys should just head for the border. How much more do we have to capitulate? Oh, we're doing pretty darn well. This is a lot better than last time. I'll be honest. A lot better. Because I was raging so hard last time we were doing this. I was not having a good time. I really hated the last time we did this. So. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Cut them off, cut them off. Muron. Nice. Good. Keep going, keep going. They have less than 10 divisions now. 900,000 Russians have died because of these morons, but that's okay. So, right, you can force the attack. If they want to force defense, they can force the attack. That's what they wanted, so. Just trying to give people what they want, man. Looking quite good down here. Quite good. Well, at this point, we don't have any more upgrades. 3, 5, 4, 2, and 3. Yeah, I wish we had more upgrades, but whatever. I wish it happened very soon. Darn it, I thought that was going to be us. But not quite. Yep, guess we go to Blagovetvichensk. Come on, man. They're almost completely dead. Just a little more. Renudinsk. Cheeto. These EPs aren't worth very much, to be honest with you. There you go. If we got rid of the boosted civilian spending, military spending, we and uh, construction spending. We we'll probably do really well with here. All the way to Kamchatka, please. Oh, or maybe not. That should be it. Awesome. Time for no political power now. Oh, we did it, everyone. That was a lot better than last time. Apologies for last time for raging so much, but you know, it is what it is. Do we have anything here, like in the final event, maybe? Reunify the motherland? Yes, please. I apologize if you can't see this one just because copyright claims. Incredible news has arrived from Russia today. After 30 years following their defeat against the Third Reich, the Russians stand united once more. Of all the petty warlords that died of the vast territory of uh, Russia, or Siberia, the ex-banned and now de facto leader of Russia, a Kurdish by the name of Aslan Usoyan. 
I also announced the subjugation of all rivals to his state. The most peculiar detail of uh, of the new order of the Lord of Russia is the form of government. Having coupled his former rival, Kudus former rival, Jabba Azuliani, Ulysses transformed the once archaic thief territory into an immense corporation controlling the majority of the products sold in the new Russia, while offering cheap labor and loose regulations. Companies and directors all around the world are celebrating this new state. It's a good day to be a capitalist. A criminal is a person with predatory instincts without a cap sufficient capital to form a corporation. Howard Scott. Za Zadorov, yeah. Capital leads the way. Ilo looked through the stacks of envelopes, taking them out one by one, quickly scanning them and reading out to Usulyam. And here we have us. Several Zaybatsu companies congratulate you with the restoration of governance in Russia and the final ascension of the rightful order within. Signatories out of the big names, Mitsui and Sumitomo. Mitsubishi will probably offer a separate congratulation or Russell Papers. And here we have, oh, it seems that even Mr. Fobin has written to congratulate you. Oh, Chief Fobin hopes for a continuation of these close partnerships. Oh, well, you know how these German industrials are. Guy Lindbergh and Siemens wrote, Though Mr. Flick opted not to write, I think we will not be hearing from the man considering his views. Some more, more rustling, a flap of dropped envelopes. Now this is quite a considered amount. Ford Motors, General Motors, Texaco, General Electric, U.S. Steel, many are congratulating us. Very well, Lucian pronounced, sitting, cutting Elo short. You're about to go. You're free to go. The crackle of the crinkled letters, the click of shoes behind the door. Lucian looked out the window of his office. For the first time in a long, long while, he generally smiled. Now this is what they call power. A peaceful transition to free markets. But now, my friends, that is the end of the campaign for, currently, at the time of this recording, the community expansion for the Ugra Nation. It's been a lot of fun. I actually really enjoyed this part. Both sides. I really liked both sides. It's a bunch of fun. The United All-Russian Transnational Company. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the campaign, even though I don't like all this debt. But regardless, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you liked it. Leave, uh, subscribe if you're new. Subscribe. Check out my Discord link in the description below if I can remember what to say. And re maybe even ring the bell icon if you haven't already. But thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 thieving rest of your day.